Hello there everybody, my name is Bloomer Brown and welcome back to Ballymoon Castle where this morning, yeah, we're getting a little bit of a later start than usual and that's because I decided to treat myself to a lion after you know, cutting and wrapping all the silage late into yesterday evening. Uh, so yeah, we are up at the sheep farm because of course today is the day I had set aside for the sheep sale uh, before we start bringing in some cows. Uh, so yeah, they're Health is at 73% and uh, yeah, it's not actually going to get any better because of course we have been feeding them exclusively on hay, uh, but yeah, they are in good health. Uh, the major problem with selling them today, and uh, to be honest, I probably couldn't have picked a worse day uh, except perhaps for tomorrow. Yeah, basically the price is at an all-time low at the moment, and uh, yeah, it's probably not the best time to be selling the sheep. Uh, you can completely disregard the prices on the left-hand side because of course we are using the better animal prices mod uh, which doesn't actually gel with seasons uh, so yeah we are going to be getting somewhere around 230 to 40 per animal and yeah we basically spent 500 on them at the start of the season but yeah I'm not overly worried about that because you know we really did clean up on the wool this season we got very very lucky with a lot of great demands on the map so yeah it's a case that um, yeah, we're just going to have to take that little bit of a loss on the nose and uh, just roll with it because I do want to get them sold off today. And in order to get them sold, uh, I have leased an animal transport trailer, uh, which is a modded trailer and is, you know, an absolutely fantastically modeled piece of equipment. Uh, this is, of course, a Brahan trailer, which is an Irish brand and yeah really suits the map and to be honest i really wish i was buying this as opposed to just leasing it out so uh, let's jump into the tractor and if we hit the x key uh, we can see that there is a very nice animation on this uh, so the back door opens down and then the little gates open up and yeah that is a very very nice touch there to be honest um an absolutely excellent trailer very well modeled and very well animated uh so yeah it's time to start loading up on the sheep and uh, it turns out that we can fit 14 uh, into this particular trailer so uh uh, let's get these guys secured and uh, we can start making our way down to the animal market uh, to get them sold off and see exactly how much we are going to be getting per animal. Now I suppose there is an argument to be made uh, for kind of holding on to these a little bit longer until the price increases in the winter but yeah the the issue with that is of course that because of seasons their demand for food is going to be increasing and they're going to be spending a lot more time inside and yeah not producing any wool so it's going to be basically a case that they're going to be capitalizing capitalizing my time and you know consuming a hell of a lot more food now i mean i know we're not really short on uh, hay at the moment and you know depending on how well the rest of the autumn goes you know we'll be probably in a pretty decent position um, but yeah I mean I really want to kind of dedicate time to the cattle and so yeah it really does make sense to sell them today even though we're not going to be getting a fantastic price so arriving back at the animal market it is time to uh, get the stock loader out and uh, we can back this trailer in and start unloading the sheep a couple of weeks ago I actually came across a grassman video uh, I'm sure if you are interested in farming simulator you may have heard of them they did a kind of an interview slash documentary with uh, the Brahan brothers who are of course the founders of uh, this trailer manufacturing company and yeah it's a kind of an interesting story uh, they basically both started off as uh, commercial welders uh, welder fabricators uh, who got asked to build a silage trailer and uh, legend has it that so high was the quality of this silage trailer uh, that word quickly spread and yeah today they are an international company uh, manufacturing a range of trailers uh, so yeah I will leave a link to that in the description down below if I remember to 
So uh, yeah, after selling those, turns out we're getting a little bit more than I thought, 148 per animal. Uh, that may end up coming down as we flood the market with new sheep, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, back to the sheep farm I go, and I think what I'm going to do is skip time forward a little bit and uh, join up with you when I am coming in with the last trailer load. And so after a long morning, we at last have the final trailer load of sheep coming down to market. Uh, I am leaving 24 of them up at the sheep farm. I did say that I wanted to hold on to a little few, uh, just because, you know, I like having them knocking around. But uh, yeah, they shouldn't uh, really consume too much food at all. And um, yeah, it'll be a little bit easier to look after them and manage them. Uh, I should point out that I did actually have to bring the Massey up there at one point because the feeding area did get a little bit messy and because of the reduced numbers uh, it seems you know there must be some correlation there or something in the code uh, which kind of means that they were that their cleanliness was decreasing over time. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to drop the trailer over there for now. And we are going to start setting up for bringing in the cattle. Uh, so yeah, we do have a mix station at the farm, uh, which is kind of a high capacity unit. And to be honest, I did want to mess about with this Keenan Mech Fiber 340. Uh, in particular, because it is a used model. Uh, which does come in a little bit cheaper. Now, we're not actually going to be buying this outright because uh, basically I want to make sure that I have enough money to buy some cows today and we are going to have to take a loan to deal with that. Uh, but yeah, looking at the leasing costs, you know, it's 132 per day and 660 per operating hour. And yeah, I think for now, I would just like to lease this. We may end up needing a slightly bigger one at some point, or we may go over and start using the mix station at the farm. Uh, but I did want to kind of include this because, you know, it's a second-hand piece of equipment and, you know, should really suit the style of farm that we have. Uh, now, because we are dealing with silage and we're going to be cleaning out the cattle a bit as well, I thought that we should probably... Uh, get a bucket for the telehandler. Uh, we do have one, incidentally, for the front loader on the Massey, but it's a case that that is a little bit less maneuverable than the Merlot, and yeah, we might as well just have a look and grab hold of a bucket for uh, the telehandler because it'll just make maneuvering around in the silage pit and that kind of thing a hell of a lot easier uh, So yeah, no shortage of options, but I think I am going to go uh, For this particular model here the Magus Magsy, which I think think might be a Polish brand I'm not entirely sure uh, but yeah it has a good capacity and is designed for the telehandler uh, so yeah those two new pieces of equipment need to be picked up uh, before we start bringing in the cattle uh, because I would like to get a little bit of a mix made and you know put some water and stuff in I am just going to ditch the trailer there for now and you know perhaps we can role play that they are you know loading it up for us or something like that. So yeah I'm going to cut and come back once we are getting ready to mix up some TMR. And yeah I decided it was the most convenient option to bring the telehandler down to the shop to get the bucket and the Keenan picked up. Uh, so yeah, let's jump straight into uh, making a mix and obviously we're going to need a tractor uh, to power this thing. The Merlot obviously doesn't have a PTO, uh, so yeah, the and with the Massey up at the sheep farm, the Fent is the only option we have. Well, I suppose we could put it on the 675, but uh, yeah, I think a little bit more horsepower is probably best. Uh, so yeah, we are not going to use any straw uh, for the 
total mixed ration uh, mostly because we don't have a lot of it at the moment and I kind of want to use it for bedding so it's just going to be a mix of silage and hay and yeah I'm actually quite happy with the size of bucket that we have for the Merlot it seems to make a pretty decent mix with a single scoop and just two bales of hay uh, the way I'm going to make sure that it is fully topped off with silage uh, just to make the most use out of those bales and yeah so that we can actually tip this into the feeding trough straight away because uh, yeah though there are no animals in there there is some capacity to actually accept the silage so yeah we are probably going to have to make another mix at some point and for now i'm just going to drop the mix wagon over in the silage pit uh, before getting a little bit of straw ready for some bedding and uh, yeah as it turns out they're only going to take one bale for now uh, but we are probably going to need to put a little bit more in at some stage and of course the most important thing when dealing with animals is of course making sure that they have water because their health will decline quite quickly without it um so yeah uh, back we go to the animal market to start picking up our first load of cattle. Uh, so we're going to get ourselves hitched on once again to the trailer and uh, yeah, back ourselves into the trigger and start getting loaded up. So yeah, the cattle are going to end up costing us 2,500 a head. And yeah, I've actually forgotten to take out a loan to cover this, uh, or rather extend our loan uh, in order to cover this purchase. So let's find the finances and we can start uh, clicking on the 5,000 euro uh, symbol once again to bring us up to about 71,000. I'm not going to max out the loan just yet, uh, but I may end up taking a little bit more depending on how many I end up buying. I'm not sure if I'm going to get three trailers or four trailers just yet. So yes, nine animals loaded up and uh, yeah, we can bring them back to the farm and get them stuck into some food and water. And so our first load of cattle are at last arriving and yeah, we're going to go through the whole animation process because you know, it adds a little bit of ceremony to the whole thing or something like that. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to unload all nine of them into the pen and... Uh, there we go and as it turns out the cow health is a little bit low but that should come up pretty quickly I'm putting it down to transport stress or something like that so yeah they have food water and uh, also a little bit of grass so yeah they should do pretty well and I have to say it is quite nice to see the animals in the pen at long last uh, it has been very very quiet around here so, uh, time to get ourselves down and get another couple of loads transported over here. And so, fourth and a final load, which brings us up through 36 cows. A few less than I was hoping to get initially. I was, you know, I really did want to get 50 or so of them in here, uh, just to produce a little bit more milk. Um, but yeah, taking a quick look, uh, the increased numbers have obviously mean that we need to, uh, you know, give them a little bit more food and water to get them through the night. Ah, uh, so yeah, second uh, load of TMR for the day, and yeah, things are looking a little bit better. Although we could max out the power food, I think I'm going to leave that until the morning. So yeah, we also have filled up on grass as well, uh, because I have let them out to the field to get a little bit of grazing. So yeah, let's get this stored, uh, let's get the Keenan stored away somewhere. And I have to say, it is a really excellent model. I haven't really talked about it yet, but uh, yeah, if you've ever made things or designed things, um, it is often far, far easier to make a pristine model than it is to make something that is a little bit weathered and battered looking. And yeah, I have to say, they really have pulled it off with this Keenan. Uh, it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, so yeah, very nice job. And yeah, so for the rest of the evening, I think, you know, the animals are looking pretty well. And I think it's probably time we start looking into getting some of the silage bales transported down to the yard here. And I think we're probably going to end up 
Uh, doing that uh, with that Ursus bale transporter, the Ursus T127. Uh, obviously, we're not going to end up buying this outright, but we are going to just lease it. Um, and that's going to set us back at 3,400 and change. Uh, so, yeah, time to get the Brahan Animal Transport trailer back to the shop. And we can pick up the Ursus at the same time. So yeah, kind of sad that this trailer has to be returned. I would really like to buy it outright, but to be honest, I don't have the money at the moment. And hopefully next season, we will be able to purchase something like this outright and have one of our very own. So yeah, bye-bye Brahan trailer. And uh, yeah, I think the Ursus should actually be ready for us at the moment. Uh, so let's take a spin around to the corner and see if it is here and indeed it is so let's get ourselves hitched on uh, so yeah it is a little bit faster than rounding up bales with a telehandler but it is going to be still a really long process and to be honest i think we're going to end up holding on to this for two days which means you know we're going to be paying a little bit more for it um but yeah it is kind of an easier way of dealing with the silage bales uh, and taking a look at it we have only got 21 hours left to go before these bales are fully fermented uh, which is you know pretty good um because yeah we may end up starting to open some of these a little bit sooner than i thought and we may end up selling off slightly fewer of them than i was expecting uh just taking a look at how much silage and hay they actually took today and of course that is only going to increase over the winter as the grass kind of dies off and then we are not able to graze them and they end up spending a little more time inside um, and seasons of course does model that as well so they're yeah they're going to actually need they're going to be hungrier for total mixed rations so yeah it'll be interesting to see how many of these bales we actually end up using this winter so yeah, first load collected in no time at all, and I think we can get this back to the firm and find somewhere suitable to store it. So I was initially thinking of storing them over at the silage pit we didn't use uh, this season, but uh, I have second thought it probably is going to be a better position to drop them over here kind of amongst the other bales and it is a kind of a suitable area there's no cover on it but we don't actually need uh, to keep silage bales under cover and yeah it kind of keeps everything you know nice and tidy and neat and all in one area something i am going to try to do is leave a little bit of space between these silage bales because yeah i notice that sometimes in fs17 when the physics loads the silage bales get the shivers and yeah i have had stacks collapse on me before uh, which does make a terrible mess and yeah it's something i would like to avoid here in the main yard uh, so yeah, one load down and uh, time to head back to the field for another. And luckily there is no collision on that hedge because that was a little bit tighter of a turn than I should, than I was expecting. Uh, so yeah, once again going to use the field track up and down by the BGA uh, just to kind of cut our journey time down a little bit. Uh, so yeah, fourth load is in and yeah, the sun is once again starting to set over the fields of Ballymoon Castle. And I think I'm going to end up uh, trying to clear that field this evening, uh, which will obviously be work that will be carried on long after dark. And so with that, I think I am once again going to take the opportunity to say thank you very much for tuning in. You have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube, and I will see you next time.